Martin, Stanley Messenger. Uh, he, he said to me once that uh, there are no objects, there are no things. Everything, that, like for example the wooden table, everything is an event because once that was a tree and uh, in years to come that will be thrown away into a skip and it will end up decomposing somewhere. Uh, we don't perceive that as an event because it's happening on a slow scale. But there are no things, there are only events. Well, <clears throat> that table was once a tree, and when yeah. it was a tree, it was an illusion. Now it's an, a different kind of illusion, yeah. and when it's thrown on the scrap heap and, and, uh, and uh, goes back to, to energy as it decomposes, then um, it will still be um, an illusion. And this is, this is for me, if, you, if you're talking about how we controlled, how the few control the many. Uh, if you can suppress the information that people receive in terms of what is possible, you to the same rate suppress their perception of what is possible. Okay, now once um, you have um, accepted that what is what we're told is possible is, is is how it is then you're living in a box that big so anyone that starts to talk about things that are beyond mm -hmm. that perception of possibility you immediately dismiss them as crazy mm -hmm. and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about a few centuries ago um, when people said the earth was a sphere they were perceived as crazy and dangerous. And one of the reasons was that uh, if you lived on the bottom of a ball, you would fall off, right? Now, once you introduce the law of gravity, what appears at first sight to be a nonsensical uh, uh, idea becomes perfectly logical. However, if you suppress at that time knowledge of the law of gravity, then um, people are going to dismiss the truth mm -hmm. because they can't perceive that the truth can be uh, possible. Um, and when you're talking about um, entities that shapeshift, that appear and disappear, UFOs that appear and disappear, if you um, program the population to believe that this world is all there is, that this is a solid uh, uh, world um, of solid individual objects, then the idea of, of things appearing and disappearing or shape-shifting from one state to another to that sense of perception is totally ludicrous. But once you introduce the suppressed knowledge, which is that this world is not solid and uh, what, what we're living in is basically a, a uh, symbolically a radio station in terms of all the radio and television stations broadcasting to this place now, are all um, existing in the space that I'm sitting in. I can't see them. They are not aware of each other unless they're really close on the dial. Uh, because, because they're on different frequencies. And if, if I'm on a, uh, uh, or something else is on a different frequency, a seriously different frequency to that wall, then I can walk through it or, 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 or something else can walk through it. Just as if I turn my radio on now, I tune into a radio frequency broadcast that's coming through this wall or this window. Um, and so um, this reality that we think is so solid and all that there is, is actually like a radio station. And this physical body, this holographic uh, illusion, locks us in, tunes us in like a radio to this radio station, to this reality. After 200 years of Kabbalistic magic and bloodthirsty crusades, wantonly murdering children, women, and engaging in ritualized sodomy, the French Knights Templar were rounded up, tortured, and executed. Many confessions told of the Knights Templar monks ritually sodomizing each other, invoking evil spirits, and implanting these spirits into animals such as cats. 
various black magic artifacts were confiscated from castles owned by the Knights Templar, including silver caskets containing desiccated heads and skulls. The Knights Templar referred to these heads as Baphomets. They were placed at the center of a round table. Templars would then conduct a seance invoking the spirit of Lucifer to speak through the head. The most damning information exposed them as anti-Christs. Several Knights Templar confessed that the image of Jesus was spat upon and trampled during Kabbalistic rituals, a satanic tradition which is still practiced to this day at lodges of the Ordo Templi Orientis, which was once headed by Alistair Crowley. Many Knights Templar bribed their way out of prison and escaped to Scotland and the Mediterranean island of Malta. They first renamed themselves the Sovereign Knights of Malta, and then, after establishing trade routes to North America long before Christopher Columbus, they re-emerged in Scotland, calling themselves Freemasons. All versions of Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, the Skull and Bones, the Palladian Rite of Freemasonry, Co-Masonry, Scottish Rite Masonry, the Ku Klux Klan, and Crowley's Ordo Templi Orientis are derived from the original Kabbalistic rituals of the Knights Templar. The Kabbalistic banishing ritual of the pentagram was in part performed by Queen Elizabeth II during her coronation ceremony in 1952. The ritual was based on the lesser banishing of the pentagram ritual designed by Alastair Crowley for the Golden Dawn secret society. There comes now yet another ancient ceremony. The great officers of state and the bishops and the nobles who have borne the swords the scepters and other regalia move to the steps of the throne which stands upon its dais. This throne, like the raised floor of the theater itself, is descended from those days 1500 years ago when the early kings sat for their crowning upon a mound of earth. So today the queen will ascend the steps of her throne there symbolically to be lifted into it by the Archbishop and the Earl Marshal in the sight today of a great multitude of people. It is at the moment that she is seated upon her throne that she takes possession of her kingdom. 